Five or more questions with Tommy Black. We got Tim Mosier from Junkyard here. Hey, Tim. Hi, Tommy. How are you? I am good. How long have you guys been playing? I guess the band formed probably in the late 86, early 87. I think that's about right. It's 86, I guess, officially, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was really David, the singer, and Chris Gates who formed it. And, um, the band um, signed Geffen probably in 88. And record, a couple records for that, you know. So it's been a while. It's been a good while. I mean, Geffen in '88 was was royalty. I mean, that was like you guys were hitting the band was hitting MTV really hard. I remember seeing the videos all the time. Yeah, it was the spot to be, and you know, the first record made a huge impact. And you know, we that's that's how we're still able to do it. Is just that from the, you know basically Hollywood and Simple Man keep the train you know keep the wheels moving on this machine still it, they had such a big impact right but especially it's, hollywood it's kind you know? of having a um it's been revitalized i think lately or i mean it stands the test of time it's like it feels good in the bar you know <laughs> you know what i mean yeah it's, I, I you know what i, I think it's a, it's a real test with the writing of you know the writing of the band has always been something that i don't know if people really notice but i think is time goes by the songs hold up better than maybe some of the contemporaries they're they're not dated we the band never sung about the standard shit that was sung about back you know right cars and, well we sang a little bit about cars but you know girls and drugs and you, we, it was, you know david has a, a always a pretty straightforward approach to the world and there's really no getting around that you know and uh, i think that helps as well you know? stuff you can relate to still and it still holds up and it's 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 maturing well, you know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think you know. It's surprisingly well. Yeah, it doesn't. We don't. We don't. I don't feel like I'm playing dated music, even if it has a. You know, even if date is a few years more than a few years back, it doesn't feel. It feels real present when we're doing it. I think it's also because it was based on good stuff. You know, it was southern rock and elements of metal. You know, the Motorhead side, and then also that kind of that core of all the guys in the band really coming from punk rock. Yeah. And I think that kind of was always there. And it it's such the, the foundation for the band, the sound was based on it, is pretty tried and true stuff. Leonard Skinner, Motorhead, ACDC, and punk rock. And, you know, the underground hardcore team that most of us came up from. That really is there, whether or not you hear it in the song. It's just the way the band approached things, which was a very straightforward and direct way. And, not, and a lack of pretension, I guess, is part of that, you know? True. True. Yeah. Good, good meat and potatoes. Good soup. You know? Yes. You know, <laughs> we like to rock too. You know, we, we like to rock. That's the other thing. You know, it's a rock and roll band. Like, we've always kind of shied away, shied away from all those kind. you know, we get called hair. We get called, you know, we're too ugly to be a hair band. I always thought, uh, but, um, you know, no, hold but, on. You know, we, we're just a rock and roll band with, you know, pulling from basic stuff that most people pull from, you know? So. Hold on, you got Todd Muscat in the band. You're not too ugly. Um, the Muscat. No, we have Todd. He kind of he ups up fancy look wise. That's for sure. He's uh, he's kept the he's kept the he's kept the, he's kept, the, he's kept his relevant that way for decades now. God bless him. What, what about so. the Muscats? I mean, the Todd and Brent from Fa Brent's from Faster Pussycat, and 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 they must have had some horrible horrible looking parents those two guys are like the best <laughs> the, they're the best looking guys in rock. i mean todd looks great still i mean i don't know he's kind of like a deal with the devil or both a of them of dorian gray in his house i both don't know what them. the deal is but good. you know they have good yeah, they have good genetics they're uh yeah. they're, there goes my dog by the way. um and they have good they have good parents obviously and uh, they turned out to well they have three there's three muscats and ironically we're playing with brent for the first time and He's opening for us in Vegas on Saturday the night before we play the Viper, which is I, I We're trying to figure out if that's ever happened before that Todd and Brent have been on the same bill. Awesome. We haven't really been able. To, we haven't. I don't think it's happened yet. So Saturday that's happening. And then awesome. We're back home to the Viper the next night. Give me the rest of the guys in the band right now. Names. We got Happy Zingo, who's been there since the dawn of time, from the, from the uh, Metazoic age, ah. and uh, David Roach on vocals, and, uh, Pat Zingo's drummer. Jimmy James on guitar. Um, you got me and Todd Muscat on the bass. Cool. Holding it down. Cool. Cool. And and Brian Baker was in the band in the beginning too, right? 
Yeah, Brian. Brian. Um, well, actually, Brian did a lot of the new record. He, he kind of wrote me, Dave, and Brian wrote the lion, lion's share of the new album. Wow. So he was involved a lot in the new album. It was playing shows with us sporadically over the years. I mean, we would do you know occasional reunions where we play the Viper maybe across the street or other places like that. And we would he would come when he was available from his bad religion. You know, had bad religion. Like sometimes he'd be here doing an album and we'd schedule a show. So the band hadn't been as busy as it's been in the last two years ever since, you know, the the kind of the band that really broke up just kind of took a break or just stopped when things started to change. Right. The effort dropped them and all that. But you know, he was very involved in the making of this new record. He played a bit of guitar on it and he wrote a bunch of the songs with us. And he's even in a video for the first single "Faded." He was on that, and so cool. it became that he was obviously way too busy, and we we realized we had to go out and play a lot more than we were. Mm -hmm. which wasn't very much. And so we wanted to have a solidify a fully touring and working lineup. So we brought in Jim James, who also plays with the Hangman. And, you know, it's a pretty small group of guys. You know how it is. Yeah, so I remember There's the only hangman. a certain amount of guys who really get all this stuff, you know. Yeah, and so yeah. And for, we for... brought in Jimmy, and he and he kind of and he's been great. And so we had, we had a full lineup, and Jimmy ended up playing on a bunch on the record, too. So it was kind of a seamless transition that way. Cool. Yeah. And Brian still will pop up and sit in with us when he's around. He'll still come up and sit in, which is great. So, for those listening, Brian Baker's day job is in Bad Religion. So, yes, he's been in Bad Religion for I don't know twenty five years, something forever. Yeah, but yeah, and he was the original the guitar player. I mean, at the founding, but he was on the he was the guitar player on the two Death records. Mm -hmm. So I guess an OG. Cool. And Todd Muscat joined during the second album tour. And then I started playing with them on what was going to be the third album. I was writing with them. So that's how I sort of, I'd always been in debate, you know, another band's opening and you know, other stuff, but we had always been, you know, around each other all the time. We were roommates and yeah. we lived in those dumpy apartments in Hollywood. So it was just, it was a very small scene. You know, you, I, I don't know if you, you probably remember all I was a tail. You knew everybody and you were very close. Yeah. So yeah. when they worked on the third album, I was coming, my band had gotten dropped. So I was helping writing, helping write with them and, so I started being more involved then, and then Geffen dropped them. And we did the first reunion in, like, 99, someone just told us. So it wasn't even that long a break. It's like eight well, years well, where the yeah. band didn't play. Yeah. And once that first reunion came, the full live version of it, I was I came in because mine wasn't available, and I, just played, and I joined as a full member, of, well, a playing member at that point, and have been ever since. So that was 99, Very which cool. is kind of scary. Very cool. Yeah, and then <laughs> I remember Todd also, one more Todd, playing with Gilby Clark and Kills for Thrills when I was a kid. We played with them. Like, I mean, yep. again, the Muscat's been doing it for a while. You know, it's great. Well, um, well, yeah, they go, you know, Todd and Pat were in a band called Shanghai, hmm. which was kind of came up right when DNR was happening and probably because the Roses opened for them a bunch. And then... Pat joined Junkyard, and Todd went off to the Kill for Thrills with Gilby, right. ironically, who eventually circled back and was in Guns N' Roses. And they would Kill for Thrills kind of, you know, they, they, they ran out there saying that's when he joined um, Junkyard. So, wow. Yeah. Wow. And when you yeah. guys did your uh, show with, uh, the first time I saw you guys doing it again was with the Dead Boys at the Viper Room. Yeah. You guys, both of you just about broke the building. Um, it was... <laughs> I was worried. I was back there, like, praying um, behind the bar that oh. the, the whole building wouldn't collapse. It was awesome. A bad for old men, eh? Right. <laughs> yeah. But it was cool. I don't know. So um, I saw you guys are going to do a tour in the U.K. soon, right? Or you, you did? or We are. We're going to... Um... We're doing... We're going to England in, for the first 10 days of November. Uh-huh. And um, we're doing some shows on our own, but we're also doing a handful of shows opening for Blackberry Smoke. It's going to be real fun. That's cool. That's a great it's band. Yeah. It's, it, Charlie the Singer was a, is a long time. You know, we find fans in the strangest places, you know, and he was a long time fan. And him and Brian Baker actually became acquaintances. And he heard we were doing a new record and he reached out and said, can I write a song for your record? So he actually wrote a song or a new record, which they actually did on their new album as well. Wow. I, he said, I heard yours and I decided I wanted to do it too. So, oh, so perfect. We had some kind of a connection that way. And I, and they were going over there and they said, we got to, you know, you want to do some shows with us. So we already had a few of our own kind of, so it was really just a bit, bit of kismet. So wow. we're doing that in the first part of November. And then the rest of the year, besides, you know, we got the Viper on Sunday and then we do 
we go back east for a couple shows, and then we're doing a handful of shows with LA Guns through the South mm -hmm. at the end of November and beginning of December. Wow. So, and then New Year's, it looks like up north in San Francisco, and then Seattle and Portland. So we kind of wrap up the year going up to the Pacific Northwest. And then, then God knows where. Tracy <laughs> was just in the other night, too, with Jared James Nichols. And I was that, there, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you were there. Yeah, out front telling me to put Junkyard on the marquee six times. But we don't have, yeah. enough, we don't have enough J's, I don't think. I'm going to check. <laughs> I was, I was, I was, <laughs> well, go buy some damn J's. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Those J's are hard to find. Um, they are hard to come by, I yeah. guess. Well, well. Um, well, well, never hurt staff. That's what my dad said. You can always ask. Yeah, no, no, it's good. It's good. It's good stuff. Whatever you want, we'll do. Whatever you want. As um, long as there's enough J's, you got it. Now, what's up with Shut Up We're Trying to Practice? You know, we did that film was recorded in 89. Um, but it was like a full blown record at the Palace, which is now the Avalon. Is that what they call that now? Yeah. Um, and it's the, the band had just gotten back from their first, you know, the, it was kind of the last show of the tour for the first album. So it was recorded, I think, for radio. I think it was like Tennessee might have broadcast it live. So it was a full 24 track like they used to do back then, live recording. So it was recorded really well. And the tapes file into our lap when, you know, the labels, I don't know how they felt. But anyway, we have the tapes and we put it, and Cleopatra put it out years ago. And it had gone out of print. And I guess since the new album was kind of, and we're out touring again. It's kind of created some interest, you know, at least in their minds. And so they decided to put it out again. So we think, okay, this is great. Let's, you know, let's, because it's been bootlegged. It's, you can only get it as a bootleg and they're expensive. And, you know, it's, it, when it gets like that and people are paying, you know, $70, $100 for a record, I'm glad that the labels start putting them out again because that's wow. ridiculous. But so we're, they're doing a, a cool, uh, there's going to be a vinyl of it. I think it comes out in late October. You can order it before then, but we're getting our mitts on a few copies. We're going to have the Viper. I think it's the first time we're going to, they're getting a handful of vinyl and two CDs for the hardcores who have been asking for it, and we'll have it there. But it won't be on sale until October. But it's from back in the day. But it's a, it's a pretty lively little recording. The band's in full, it's full flight wow. at that point. So, yeah, it's cool. It's awesome. Yeah, I, I saw that yeah. was coming out. That's really cool. That's it's good. It's good. I'm glad a lot of things are happening for you guys. You guys deserve it. And we're we're lucky enough to have you this Sunday, uh, September second. Well, we feel like it's our our home. You know, it's our home venue, our home club, our back. You know, our our own little uh, place because we feel comfortable. We get to we play, and it's you know we get to have bands with us. And I mean, a Dead Boy Show was something else. That was riotous. That was real good. And yeah. We always have great shows there. It always sounds good and. I've known Stephanie and forever, and you know we just go way back. So yeah, it yeah. feels very comfortable and cozy for us. So we're ha we're very happy. We feel we you know we only have the pr you have hometown gate boys have pressure. There's no getting on that, but this is, is a much less stressful environment because we feel like we can you know we have people who are being uh -huh. nice to us and we we feel comfortable there and we know the room so well so we can sell and actually do a good show because sometimes you don't do your best shows at all but just the way it goes yeah how it is yeah yeah so because there's so many other things to do with, you know but um but this will be the last time of the year we're not going to play around here until 19 it looks like so this will be the last real deal around so we're excited and want to do a good and have a good have a good uh sunday night out i know it's sunday but Everyone has Monday off. Remember that. Yes. So, no, we're we're um, very very excited to have you, and, and uh, I'll see you then. All right. <laughs> well, thank you very much. We're excited to be there. It's great. All right. Well, we, oh, we always appreciate being asked that. We always do. So. <laughs> all right. Well, well, thanks. Thanks for talking with me, Tim, and and see you. Tommy, see it was you a then. pleasure. Yeah, always. And I'll see you on Sunday. All right. Thanks. Bye.